It's almost going to be hard for historians to believe <laughs> the attitude and the actions of the president and the vice president uh, because they certainly have gone off on their own without any real uh, you know, understanding of American history or American values or our Constitution or separation of powers or checks and balances. And I think it's very important as president to restore um, the real meaning of what our form of government should be. And, and for me, that is everything I've said, plus making it very clear uh, that we will have a government of people who are qualified to do the job.
is a fire and really made poverty an issue that our country has to deal with again. We haven't had a serious conversation about it in quite some time. And we have so many people who are poor and near poor and close to being poor and falling out of the middle class. We've got to have trade agreements that are going to be enforceable with strong labor and environmental standards. So there is a lot that John and I have in common. And I will be a fighter and I intend to ask John Edwards to be part of anything I can do. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> there's no doubt that President Bush has nominated and had confirmed people who have really changed the makeup of the court in ways that I'm not sure um, many Americans yet fully grasp. The current Supreme Court is not only very negative about a woman's right to choose and very much against Roe v. Wade. We know that. But they're against workers' rights, and they're very pro-corporation. You know, you can see it in their decisions. Uh, so we need to have someone who will get back the court into balance. Uh, yes, yes, we need somebody who will be on that court, who understands again what life is like for most people. You know, there were so many decisions that were wrong, in my view, coming out of this court. But I'll just give you one little example. You know that still today, equal pay for equal work is not a reality for most women. And so, a woman makes on average 77 cents for every dollar that a man makes, and women of color make even less. So the Equal Pay Act, which goes all the way back to President Kennedy, has helped to remedy the injustice when somebody is caught paying women less. Well, there was a woman who was working at a factory in Alabama. Her name was Lily Ledbetter. And she rose to become a foreman, and the only woman in that position. And she worked there for a number of years, as I recall, at least 15 or so years. And one day she realized that despite the fact she had more seniority than most of the men, that her job evaluations had been very high, she was actually making less than all the men who were in the same position. So she complained, and they basically ignored her, so she went to a lawyer, and the lawyer sued. And the law, up until this court, was very clear. If you were caught discriminating against a woman in terms of paying for the same job, you had to pay back pay, and you had to pay a penalty. So the Bush court read the law totally differently, and said, no, she can't get back pay, she can only get paid from the time of the, you know, moment that she learned about the problem. Well, she didn't know about it. People weren't talking about their pay stubs. So when she learned about it, years had gone by. So they effectively narrowed her remedy. To me, that's exactly what's wrong with this court. They don't live in the real world. They live in an abstract, Maybe if you know practice in Lewiston or been you know, <laughs> representing somebody who has a problem, you know what it's like to have to work hard and, and do the very best you can. You know, let me say that I have loved this. I got to call an end to it now because of uh, time constraints, but I hope you'll come up and say hello to me before I have to go. And I want to just end by saying this. You know, I've been very, very specific in this campaign. I told you what I will do as president because I want you to hold me accountable. Because when the speeches are over and the cameras are gone and the lights are down, I want you to know what I intend to do. Because I'm not asking you to take a leap of faith on me. I'm asking you to look at my record of producing positive change for people. And I'm asking you to join with me tomorrow to caucus for me and then to stand with me until we make history.